In India, it is believed that if somebody can become an emperor of the whole world, they are called a Chakravartin. The word chakra means wheel. To avoid unnecessary fighting, the emperor would wheel his golden chariot from one kingdom to the next. If the chariot was left unobstructed, that meant the kingdom accepted the owner of it as their superior and there was no need to fight. Wherever people obstructed the chariot, there would be war. If the chariot was not obstructed anywhere, then the superiority of the king was proved, and without any war, the king became a Chakravartin. This has been the desire of all kings. It was such a rare feat, only happening once every thousand years. Even Alexander the Great was not a world conqueror. Because a Chakravartin is such a rare being, he is received in heaven with much rejoicing. He is given the honor of being led to Sameru, the largest mountain in the universe to engrave his name on it. His whole family even committed suicide so they could see such a rare thing, a world conqueror engraving his name on this mountain. The gatekeeper welcomes him when he arrives. He says, I have brought my family to watch me engrave my name on the mountain. The gatekeeper pulls him aside. Do not bring them with you. You will regret it. The emperor didn't understand. What was the point of engraving his name if no one would see it? If you wish, go engrave your name first, and then bring your family in to see it. The emperor agrees. He is taken to the mountain and shocked to find that on this mountain that would dwarf the Himalayas, there was no space to write his name. The entire mountain was covered in names. He could not believe his eyes. And for the first time, he realized what he was. Up until now, he thought he was a superman a rare being that only comes once in a thousand years. But a thousand years means nothing to the whole of eternity. Countless numbers of world conquerors had come before him, and countless would come after him. The gatekeeper tells him if he wishes to write his name, he can erase a few names and write his own. The emperor did not want to write his name. What was the point? One day someone would come and erase it. His whole life had become meaningless. This was his only hope, that Sumero would have his name engraved on it. For this he had lived, staked his whole life, and was ready to kill the entire world to gain. All to one day have his name erased. I will not write my name, he said. In this whole world, what can you gain? What can you take away with you? Your name, your prestige, your respectability, your money, your power, your scholarship, what? You cannot take anything. Everything will have to be dropped here. And in that moment, you will realize that everything you possessed was not yours. You've spent your life working to gain possessions, working to gain the respect and acceptance of people who mean nothing to you. Think about how many times you didn't pursue a calling, didn't speak up, hid your true self for fear of what others would think. So many people have lived and died on this planet, and it made no difference how they were perceived by others. Even if you were such a rare being that only came once every thousand years, it still made no difference. Your only concern should be to protect those qualities you can take with you when death destroys your body. Call it whatever you want, your integrity, authenticity, innocence, these will be your sole companions. These are the only values that matter. The people that possess them are the only ones that live. To a child, they are always called to the new, to the unfamiliar. If you listen to your innermost being, it will always be drawn to the new. The being is an adventurer, and the heart is a gambler. But when a child is born, society grabs it and starts molding it into something useful. They kill the child's soul and give him a false identity, so the true self is not missed. But this false personality is only useful in the crowd that has given it to him. As soon as you are alone, the false begins to fall apart. This is why there is such a fear of being alone. Meditation is nothing but a courage to be silent and alone. As you start moving away from the false and into the real, this creates a gap, a purgatory. You are no longer the false identity, but you are not yet the real. This gap creates a sort of dark night of the soul. You are in limbo and you do not know who you are. But to be the real you, against the values of society is true courage. It does not matter that the whole world is against you. What matters is that your experience is valid. 
And the moment you are truly unafraid of the crowd, you become a lion.